Okay, here's a thin version. The thin, I mean, it's what I cut off. The one up there is probably about three quarters of an inch thick. This is uh, what I have hanging up there. So the mass goes here, and then you got two choices. You can either use a big U-bolt on the outside holes or a smaller one. So I'm using the larger one, so I have a U-bolt here, a U-bolt here, and then over here, pushed all the way in, like so there's hardly any room, maybe a half inch gap. Very close to that is a uh, easy link, which is a link with threads, and then that's holding the ballon up at top. So that's what I made. This is, uh, I actually uh, cut it thinner, and this was the piece that was left after I cut it thinner. Didn't take many breaks today to film. Put the coax in. Digging the trench. So there's the ballon hanging up top. We're up at about 30 feet. I painted the uh, all the clamps. I just sprayed them with primer real quick since it's. I know primer absorbs the water, but since they're plastic, I'm not really worried about that. And then at the bottom, I left a loop so I can go up another eight foot or so. And I'll clean that up, and I'm going to keep it right near the ground. So hopefully, if something comes down, it'll jump out of the coax and blow out of the coax. And that's my wish, anyway. So that's that part. You can see, I'm using uh, Davis Berry Flex. Pretty good cable. I've got it going. I'm going to be able to see the little pet trench right down the center there. It goes all the way over by the window. And then our line's going out. I'm having a hard time seeing it there, as you can see, it going to that tree over there. Right now I have it guide to the fence using the Dacron rope and this stuff's got some spring to it and it's strong it's got a 770 pound pole and if you look I don't have a lot of tension this isn't really tension down and it's a little breezy today and it's not even moving at all so they're all like that now this one just got a short radius on it I thought that was a snake it was a piece of rope <laughs> I saw a snake before. So these have a little bit of tension on them. But they're at a different radius than the other ones. And that's all I can do. I mean, this is, this is the corner. I can go out maybe another couple feet, but it's not really going to gain me anything. So I'm keeping an eye on that for now. I might have to put a taller post over there in the corner. And then here's the other one. This one's got a little bit of tension on it. So. There's a bolt in here, eye bolt going through the fence. And then I've got enough slack here where I can go up farther if I want to. Uh, if I want to use the mass system for, I mean, it goes up to 50 feet. So there's enough rope here, I think, to go up to uh, 44 or something like that. And if I ever want to uh, take it down, take it with me or take it somewhere, I have enough rope where I can go all the way to the ground at 100% radius full full height. So I kept that in mind with the rope. And then over here is the other line. Going to those branches, two sticking out of the side there, that's where the pulley system is, and then down to the bottom. Now I have, I went over there and put a piece of, uh, well not a piece of, but a, a weight off a dumbbell that was seven and a half pounds and it pulled the rope down farther than I have it set right now. A little slack, and I don't know if you can see. 
right about in the center is the insulator floating around. So there's not much holding it. So I might go to a, a totally free floating system and put a, some kind of weight on there, maybe like a 10 pound weight. So there's not that much. Before, when I tried to do it flat top, it was, it was a crazy amount. So let's go over to the feed point and I'll show you what I did over there. I don't know if you can see, but there's a pulley out. Let's see if I can get a better angle on it so you can see it. Anyway, there's these two line poles goes up over the branch and comes back down. Then at the top, there's about a three or four foot uh, length knotted off with the pulley on the end of it. So, actually, you can see it a little bit better now, I think. Okay, and then this other one here, that's by itself, I put it on a different hook, is the one that's going out and over to our line. Now watch, I have... As far as any tension on that, I can... I mean, it's not, I've got some slack in it so I can see what's going on, but there's not really a whole lot of weight holding that. And then I have enough rope here, I can lower it all the way to the ground. And I can also lower the pulley all the way to the ground if I need to work on it. Got it knotted off there. So, plenty of rope. I think I used about 900 feet of this 316 stack round rope to do everything. Okay, I'm going to try and block the wind from the mic here. It's a little breezy. Uh, this points, uh, I'm in Florida, bottom of Florida. If you drew a straight line off this, it'd be pointing at like Seattle or something. I think it's like 316 degrees or something, 312. So it's pretty breezy, and the mast hasn't been moving that much at all, which is pretty good considering it's not really goddamn real tight. So. There's the one insulator. This is the 45 foot leg on the south, and to the north there's a 90 foot leg. And I have ties to the tree, and we'll see how long it takes uh, code enforcement to come out here and tell me I need to take it down because the guy's an idiot. Nobody's going to build in these lots. Number three and four closures in the whole country. Like somebody's going to come here and buy this lot and build a house. Okay, so this white pipe, I dug down pretty far to get a good radius on this coax coming out. And this white pipe only grows in the ground maybe another six inches. And that's just there so I don't weed whack my cable. But right now I've got the cable running up in the window because I'm putting the connector on. I'm doing it inside the house. There'll be a loop out here. And then I was just test fitting the other cable that I made. It's going to go right 
here and it'll have a loop in it. Now on here I'm going to put some adapters so these are actually going to connect like this and the reason I'm doing that is so I can I can cover this whole thing up here and keep it out of the weather. Now I am underneath the, the overhang of the house which comes out pretty far. Overhang comes out to about out here but you can see there's a drip line. All this stays nice and wet. This ground rod here, this ground rod here stays nice. This whole area stays nice and damp. So that's what I'm working on now, doing these connectors. I already got this jumper done. And these are uh, two surge uh, arresters from Array Solutions, the uh, ice ones. I think they're the 302s. They're uh, rated at 3 kilowatts and uh, 0 to 500 megahertz, I think. So that's outside and I've already seen the window feed point. I just had to go tighten all those connectors. I think they were 18 or 19 millimeter. All of these nuts here were all loose, I think because this is hollow behind here. So I had to go tighten all those up. So if you put one in, do that before you, beforehand. So I just got the coax going through the window so I can solder. Make it a little easier. There's the cable hanging in the window I'm working on right now. This is the one coming out of the ground. Got it stripped, ready to go. I'm ready to put my connector on. And uh, I use wet paper towel to keep the heat off the from wicking up here while I'm working. Seems to work pretty good. All ready to go. Yeah, I put the collar on. <laughs> And what I didn't realize when I put the feed through in, and I covered that in my other video, was I needed to seal this top edge. And just for now, I put this blue tape that you can put on and take right back off again. I put two layers of that, and that seems to be blocking the air from coming through. So I keep these blinds down, so I don't really care. Okay, so here's the feed point up and over. Antenna side, then up and into the window. Then I'm gonna put a box over it, but for now I'm just gonna do this. And it's underneath a very pretty large overhang, so I'll just keep the weather from hitting it from the side for now. Now I had coax seal, nice bag of it. And I did use it for the uh, top up on the balance, kind of like a putty. But I can't seem to find it. It's found a home somewhere. and I'll keep looking for the coax. Yeah, I'll turn the house upside down. I can't find it anywhere. So there you go. It's right on the ground rod. Good to go. Now I finish up inside. Okay, this is the final thing I need to do. Bring the ground down. It's that ground rod. It's the last one in the chain. Now in this house, See this box over here? Supposedly that's where the ground is because there's no ground outside. But I'm not going to goof around taking that off. Besides, I don't know how good a ground would be inside the blocks if it's never going to get wet. I mean, the foundation's got to go down a ways, so whatever. Here's the new one. All gooped up. I had chisel away some of the stucco to get in there. Then I'll, I'll hook that to the wall real nice. I'm gooped up down here. I still got a bunch of this left. I gotta make a couple cables for inside. But I have enough for a second antenna right in that corner of that house. And I still got some number two ground wire left. Good amount of that. So, still got leftover stuff.